Like, that guy hasn't lost one step. That guy's lost five, six, seven steps. And that is MSNBC's Joe Scarborough talking about Donald Trump and Trump's latest interview on Fox News. We had to fight off all of the witch hunts and the scandals and the, the horrible self. These, these people, what they did, Russia, 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 Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. 51 intelligence agents saying that the laptop from hell was created by Russia. On top of rambling complaints about the deep state allegedly helping the Bidens, Trump also seemed to confuse President Biden with his predecessor, President Barack Obama. Obama dropped missiles and they ended up hitting a kindergarten or a school or the apartment house. A lot of people were killed. Well, if that's the case, he's gonna end up being indicted when he leaves office. He meant well. When he leaves office, Obama, he meant well. And he still thinks He's running against Barack Obama. And and so, I mean, he's shuffling around. I just, I really, I seriously, I, I, I think it's going to be harder and harder for the campaign to manage this guy who, it, it's just my opinion, uh, looks like he's in a serious state of decline and seriously is so confused. According to Forbes, Trump has confused Obama and Biden at least seven times in recent months. Like poor Sean Hannity, yeah, poor Sean yeah. Hannity. He's like a dad that gets a baseball and he puts it on a tee and he goes, mm -hmm. come on, Johnny, hit the tee. And Johnny keeps hitting his hand. What is your closing message to the people of New Hampshire? Uh, it's very simple. It's make America great again. But I think very important before we do this, because you were talking about the Supreme Court, they have two votes that are very important coming up. One is, as we discussed, we call it Colorado or whatever, but, you know, the, I, I really believe they're going to leave the people to vote. Again, you're the leading candidate in both parties. You're leading the Democrats by many, many points. I mean, it's hard to imagine they would do. And most states have already approved it, as you know. Very few states have done that. This is Colorado and a couple of others at this moment. But they have another important, and that's immunity for the president. The president of the United States, and I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about any president, has to have immunity. That's right. Trump's closing message for New Hampshire is presidential immunity. Because if you take immunity away from the president, so important, you will have, you will have a president that's not going to be able to do anything. Because when he leaves office, the opposing party, president, if it's the opposing party, will indict the president. Clearly, Donald Trump's legal challenges are weighing on him as much, if not more, than his message to presidential primary voters. And again, these were softball or t-ball questions to Trump from Sean Hannity. I don't often feel sorry for Sean Hannity, but I did because he had just absolutely teed up the ball. And, and, and Donald Trump, you know, hits the lamp on the table or whatever. It's, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Throughout the Fox interview, Trump did his usual exaggerations, boasts, and outright lies. Prior to COVID, the China virus coming in, we had the most successful country ever in history. There's never been anything like it, what we did. The best country in history? There's never been anything like it? Trump's claims, as outlandish as ever, do seem to be getting more silly, simplistic, and meandering. Take, for example, his reference to Mexico. They gave us things that nobody can believe. The State Department couldn't believe it. The Border Patrol people, they couldn't believe it. Nobody could believe it. Nobody could believe it. You know, if you talk to Tom Homan, and if you talk to anybody from Border Patrol, and they have great people, they have great people, they'll tell you the greatest president in history for the border, for immigration, was Trump, not even a contest. There was a time when Trump was great at delivering witty, quick, and often humorous attacks on his opponents. But even the Trump attacks on Democrats, while getting more extreme, seem to have lost some bite. These people, what they're doing to our country, they're allowing millions and millions of people to pour through just, it's an invasion into our country. And they're coming from prisons and they're coming from mental institutions. Mental institutions and insane asylums and prisons are being emptied all over the world, not just in South America. For all of the cognitive decline, loss of a few steps, and even confusion, Donald Trump does have his moments that clearly connect with Republicans. And it does seem that Trump is paying attention to some polling about his opponents, including Democrats. Several surveys have found that independent and moderate voters who are going to decide this general election usually like President Biden personally, even if they oppose his policies. So Donald Trump has begun to catch himself while swiping at Biden and arguing the country's on the wrong track. Watch. Biden is a threat to democracy. He's an absolute threat to democracy. 
He's very dangerous for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's grossly incompetent, which is the number one reason. But he's also actually in his own way. It's not him. It's the people that surround him. You got some very bad people surrounding him at that desk. You have people running the Department of Justice surrounding him. They're young and they're smart and they're communists and they're Marxists and they're fascists. And they're running this country. They're running it right into the ground. Whether Trump deliberately or not put the blame on people around Joe Biden instead of on Biden himself, it was interesting to watch. And it suggests that Donald Trump may be more politically savvy and smart than his frequent confusion and stumbles portray. To be clear, the same could be said of President Biden. For all the Biden gaffes and mistakes, the president still has moments of clarity and shrewd political maneuvering. Anyway, for all the decline confronting the current president and the former, President Biden does have a clear advantage. He doesn't seem to face as much of what you might call the grossness factor. In other words, President Biden is not as frequently or intensely the subject of speculation about his personal hygiene as Donald Trump is. All right, I think, I think there's a good chance this man has to clap. That is Democratic strategist James Carville talking about Donald Trump and this. What the hell was that stuff on Donald Trump's hands? As Trump waved at supporters outside a courthouse, he flashed bizarre red splotches. They don't look like cuts to me. They look like sores. And I've asked a number of MDs what medical condition manifests itself through hand sores. And the answer is immediate and unanimous. Secondary syphilis. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection caused by a bacteria. According to medical experts, including the UK's National Health Service, the common symptoms of the second stage include a non-itchy skin rash appearing anywhere in the body, but commonly on the palms of the hands or soles of the feet. Other symptoms include tiredness and headaches. Trump has not said if he's suffering from headaches, but he has appeared tired and he has sounded tired. You know, your, your political beliefs, what they do, they want to debank you and we're going to debank. Think of this. Social media has been thinking about it a lot. And for two days, syphilis Don was one of the top trending items in politics. A few weeks ago, the internet went wild over claims about Trump's allegedly stinky smell. So take like armpits, ketchup, uh, like a butt, and kind of put it in a blender and makeup. And that is former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger talking to Ben Micellis on the Midas Touch Network and describing Donald Trump's bad odor. And you bottle that as a cologne? That's kind of that. Trump then drew even more attention to the issue with a campaign response. Quote, Adam Kinzinger farted on live TV and is an unemployed fraud, the spokesperson said in a statement provided to The Independent. He has disgraced his country and disrespects everyone around him because he is a sad individual who's mad about how his miserable life has turned out. I mean, this is the kind of leader, you know, of the greatest country in the world that we're looking at reinstating. An allegedly bad body odor suffering from a sexually transmitted disease Tired and confused. That is a harsh rap sheet against Donald Trump. But it's all gaining steam, thanks in part, to Trump himself. And Democrats, as well as anti-Trump Republicans, seem to realize that throwing Trump-style personal attacks back at Trump may be a way to defeat him. Clearly, all weapons are on the table, especially ridicule. By the way, Donald Trump recently exploded after being mocked in a God parody ad. God said, I need a man who will use violence to seize power. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a man whose followers will call black white, call evil good, and call criminals hostages. So God made a dictator. Mm, check out that video at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.